Mute. All right, welcome everybody. How you guys doing? Good, how are you? All right. Coach, we'll start off with an opening statement from you and then open things up for questions. Uh, big game on Thursday, top 10 team in the country. We got to do a good job rebounding. They're one of the best in the country at rebounding. We got to, you know, take good shots. We got to try to get the ball inside. We got to try to score and transition. We got to take good shots and we got to defend at a high level and not give up second shots. How excited are the guys about the magnitude of a game like this in the regular season? It's been a weird year. Kind of hard to get as hyped as we normally would, but this one feels big. It feels like, you know, maybe another level this year. Um, I can't say it's they just taking it game by game. I think with all the articles and stuff they see in the paper, but the practice has always been, you know, very energetic, but it's the next game on the schedule. Um, they beat us down there. They're a top 10 team. I think those guys are excited, but it's the next game on the schedule and we just got to keep getting better. And we, it's a tough, going to be a tough game at home. What was the biggest difference between the, you guys had them in the first half, you had a lead. What, what did you see as the biggest difference in the two halves when you were down there? I think after going back, watching the tape, we took three or four shots that were just in and out. And they came down and made some tough ones, but I felt that we settled for threes. The ball never got in the paint. So we got to do a better job when we're not making shots to try to throw it inside to Morris or Pooh Bear, try to drive the basketball. We got to get better shots um, late against Houston. Um, on the defensive end, I thought we didn't defend at a high level like we did in the first half and they started to make shots. I felt like we turned it over. We're not a team that turned it over a lot during that stretch in the second half. We had four or five unforced turnovers. So I would say unforced turnovers and we just lived on the three point line. We didn't get it inside. Quentin Grimes, is that is that kind of a Dexter assignment? Like Dex, go get him. Is that how you guys want to play that? He had a good game, obviously, in that last meeting. Yeah, 100 percent When Dexter's in the game, he's gonna guard him the entire time. Grimes is a high-level guy. He's averaging 16 points a game. He's one of the best players in the league. And he got it going against us in the second half. And I want to say he went for like maybe 18 to 20 points in the second half. So we got to definitely do a better job on him, limiting his touches. And we got to make sure Dexter is guarding him, you know, 90% of the game. This, this scheduling stuff has been, I know, crazy. It's been a whirlwind the last week. We saw the SMU stuff taken care of. Do you know, are you guys still trying to work to get Memphis in? And that game, that's obviously a, a quality game that you guys could use heading into tournament resume building. You know what? We've been talking with the conference and, you know, meeting with um, the scheduling people. And right now we're trying to get games in, but everything is still up in the air. I've been in contact with them, but right now everything is up in the air. But we definitely want to try to get some more games in if that's possible. But we're leaving that up to the league, and they're trying to do the best job of scheduling those games. And as far as you know, the conference tournament still a go as planned, right? That might be another opportunity to get some of those games. Yes, that's still a go. Hadn't heard anything different on the conference tournament. It's supposed to take place in Fort Worth, Texas. And half of that 10 point lead the last time you played Houston in the second half, does that give your guys any confidence headed in this game, even though you did lose, but to show that, hey, you guys, if you do this type of stuff, you can lead a top 10 team in the country? I think so. I think those guys felt like we could play with them and it just came down to us not defending in the second half, turning it over a little too much, um, taking some quick shots that we didn't go inside. So I definitely think the guys, you know, after the last three or four games, being able to win a couple games at home, win a game, a game on the road, those guys are playing with a lot of confidence right now. And we just got to do the little things against Houston. Again, it's just going to come down to competing and being able to rebound. Every time the ball is shot, you got to find someone to hit. That's the key to the game right there. When the ball is up in the air, find somebody to put a body on. 
do you think that your guys like playing as the underdog when they're underestimated just being in this program even do you think that that's something that your team kind of thrives on yes for sure I think coming into the season you know pick seventh in the league I think those guys took that in a way that we're going to show everyone that we're better than that I think you know no having nobody on the preseason all-conference poll that that stuff motivates those kids it gets them to play harder it gets them to buy in and it gets them to want to prove the point to everybody so I definitely think the guys are playing with more confidence and they're playing with a chip on their shoulder and they just want to go out and try to compete at a high level against a very good basketball team in Houston. You guys will be playing, as I feel like, every three or four days now for the rest of the regular season. Does that kind of give it a more of a tournament feel for this home stretch of the regular season? Yes, that helps you prepare for the tournament. You know, in the conference tournament, you're going to play three games and three nights. So that helps you prepare. But I think college athletes, you know, this late in the season, these guys know everything about what you're supposed to do on offense what you're supposed to do on defense They know how to execute all the plays. So they really want to play games a lot. So they, they don't have any problems playing three games in a week. You know, they, they prefer to play games than practice. So I think they're getting excited about this time where we can just get basketball games in. Yeah. It's kind of been the opposite, right? You guys have had so many stretches without games. Do you, do you have to approach these weeks any different at practice or is it the same level and kind of has been the whole time you just mix in a game? What we've been trying to do, if we miss a game, again, we try to make the practice like a game. We do a lot of scrimmaging. We'll play three or four, four minute games. One game will be versus zone. One game will be versus man. One game will be versus Memphis where they just run and jump. One game will be versus Houston where you get a point for offensive rebound. So we try to make it fun. You know, we do a lot of scrimmaging and we do a lot of shooting drills in practice. And then are you excited to get the same team in a stretch of days with SMU? That's that's a little bit unique, right? Got to be, I, I don't know that we've ever really dealt with that before. I don't know how you prepare for it, but the same team twice in that short amount of time. Yeah, I think it's a good thing because um, we've already did a couple scouting reports on SMU, really good basketball team. They got a kid in Kendrick Davis that's an NBA player, really good point guard. They lead our league and he's one of the top scorers. He's tops in assists, so we got to do a good job of, you know, being prepared and ready to play them. But again, Houston, that's the next game on the schedule, and we're practicing hard, you know, trying to make sure we do a good job of just preparing for them. They're well coached. Kevin Sampson is, is one of the guys who I think is one of the best coaches in the country, so I know he'll have those guys ready to go. We just got to be ready to compete. Got to be ready to compete on the glass, and that's the biggest key to the game. Um, how's all Tariq Gilbert feel, feeling? I know he was having some migraine issues last game. So how's he feeling headed into this? Oh, he's fine. He's had a good practice. Um, yesterday he was good. He's ready to go today. He's down in weights right now. We have no issues. He's good. He's 100%. And how perfect of a timing was his breakthrough game, I guess, know, knowing that, you know, when Tyson struggles to have him come through like that, because, you know, Houston is going to obviously key on Tyson uh, on Thursday. I think it was good timing for him to hit that shot. I think that's given him a lot more confidence. I think Dexter is playing a lot better. And now we got two or three more guys that are scoring the basketball, and that's going to help us tremendously. When you got a team that's got four or five different guys that can score it and you can't key on one guy, it makes it difficult for the other team to guard you. So I'm excited that Al Tariq and Dexter are really playing good basketball. Is there one player that's kind of surprised you this season, maybe a newcomer, but just somebody who, whether he's coming off the bench or something, is there just somebody that has exceeded your expectations this year? I would say the entire bench, just the way they have such a good attitude. You know, every game we get something different from someone on the bench. 
You know, it was Clarence Jackson early rebounding the basketball. It was Ricky Council, you know, early, just being able to get a couple double-figure scoring games. Um, Isaiah Poubear Chandler, he played well starting out that Tulsa game. He was really good. And then, you know, Craig Porter, those guys off the bench have given us big time minutes and they just, you know, bring our team together with the energy that they play with in practice. So I'm just excited for the overall team, but the bench guys have really given us some great minutes and energy. Taylor must be on vacation. He not on the, he had not asked a question. Very good. All right, thank you guys. Thank you, Coach, appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.